In this episode, which company is worth the most that we might see? An awful old Plymouth and the R8 of sports cars. Welcome to episode 145 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rowell, I have a question for you. I have an answer for you. Who is the most valuable car company in the world? Uh, well, based upon my knowledge of how big the car conglomerates are, I would imagine it's one of probably two or maybe three. And who might that be? That'd be Volkswagen, because I know Volkswagen owns everything. (laughs) True. And then Stellantis, because Stellantis also owns everything <laughs> they do have many sub brands yes. so i would imagine it's either volkswagen or stellantis okay so i, I kind of put you in a trick question there, mm-hmm. right because i didn't ask you i asked you what's the most valuable now how do you what metric are we using how do you define value for a car company that's a good question isn't it well, you define value by the least of number of EVs, the most amount of cylinders and horsepower. <laughs> and that is how you get the most valuable car company in the world. So it's who makes tractors? Yes. Okay. Mahindra and Mahindra. John Deere. Yes. John yes. Deere is the most valuable car company. Yep. I'm glad we sorted that one out. <laughs> 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 let's, uh, let's take a look at some car companies and some revenue numbers. Mm. We can talk about revenue, earnings, market caps. Let's just get educated on all these. Oh, okay? so we're going into some finance here. Oh. We are. Because okay. sometimes it's kind of interesting to look at this okay. stuff. Okay. So let's kick it off be. with revenue. All right. Okay. So, so what is revenue for those of us out there that just don't quite understand what that term means? So revenue is the amount of product you've sold. Okay. Okay. So if, I do believe it also does not have expenses in it. Got it. So that is top line revenue, mm-hmm. not bottom line profit, essentially. Right. Okay. Earnings will be profit, and then we'll come over to market cap after that. Got it. Revenue, to kick it off. The first brand that you said, and the highest revenue, uh, is actually Volkswagen. I had a feeling, because I just, I just know that Volkswagen owns everything Mm -hmm. like uh, all of the brands volkswagen owns them so i had a feeling the vag the vag the volkswagen auto group would be up there we'll go through the top 10 so it's volkswagen on top uh then toyota mercedes ford gm so that's a strong top five oh solid top five there yeah and then we'll scroll down to bmw honda i don't know what the next one is S A I C. Oh, it's a Chinese company. I don't know. It is a Chinese company. Mm-hmm. S A I C Motors. Yeah. Uh, then Hyundai and Stellantis. Wow, Stellantis is only at tenth. Only at tenth. That is shocking to me. Yes. I also, would have thought Stellantis would have been way the hell up there. I did not know that Stellantis was a Netherlands company. I believe it is technically based out of the Netherlands. Yeah. I did not know that. Interesting. So you have in the top five, uh, two from the U.S., two from Germany, and one from Japan. Mm, uh, yes. A notable 11th is Tesla, which is interesting, mm. an American company. Um, but that is revenue. Now, if we subtract how much it costs to actually build the car, we get to earnings, which is how much money you actually made. Mm. Now, we went from the top, you know, let's just take Toyota for an example, with $260 billion in revenue we go to earnings and we're at 27 billion so there's a big drop there 100 billion in change seems to go by the wayside in producing the vehicles costs a yes. lot of many billions i also don't know what the time frame is for this i don't know if this is like a year or how they do this um, but regardless we're going to talk about earnings and a couple notables happen here. In the top, we do have Toyota and Volkswagen. So Toyota's number one, Volkswagen's number two. So they flip-flop. Right. Then we get BMW in number three. So BMW is making cars... Uh, you know what? <laughs> Hold on a second. That actually makes a lot of sense. Uh-huh. Knowing how quickly they break down. Mm-hmm. Doesn't cost them much to make it because they don't give a shit about what they make. Right. They just sell a lot of it because they're badge. 
or it could be that the, the value of the car it's not does not take much to make but to sell they make a lot of earnings off of it and they build it crappily yes that's okay because uh, it, it must take less material to build the bigger grill because there's less mesh inside of it <laughs> One other notable, well, I'll, I'll finish out the top 10. So uh, it's from the top down. It's Toyota, Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Ford, Tesla, GM, Hyundai, Honda, and Kia. Hmm. Okay. So that means in our top five, uh, we've now lost another American brand that's mm-hmm. gone. Now we have three German brands and one Japanese brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, after that, we have three American brands, that being Ford, Tesla, and GM. Mm. Interesting that Tesla has jumped higher into the mix here. So they are another one that m- makes them cheaper than they're selling them by a lot, it looks like. Does seem to be the case. They're making good margin on each car. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as we get down into the Koreans and the Japanese, Hyundai, Honda, and Kia. Also, some other notables, uh, Mahindra down here in 15th. Um, they're pretty profitable. Yeah. Renault's down here in 19th. Just underneath Dongfeng. <laughs> there are a lot more Chinese car companies that I had not heard of in this list than I thought, mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting. BYD yeah. had never heard of. Um, I, Great, Great Wall, Wall Motors. Motors. <laughs> Don't know who that is. <laughs> Ferrari, way down here in 25th. Oof. Kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. So that is the top 10 for revenue and earnings. Now, Let's get into something weird, which is market okay. cap. Market okay? cap. Oh, are we going to be bankers now? Uh, market cap, to my understanding, is take the share price that you can trade on the stock exchange, multiply it by the number of shares that are out there, and that's your market cap. Mm. This is silly. <laughs> this is very silly. I haven't even shown you who's in the lead, but the margin that they are in the lead by is kind of wild. And I don't understand this at all. Who is it? Market cap. Tesla at $562 billion. What? Then you have Toyota in second at oh. under $200 Holy billion. shit. Well, <laughs> if we went by market cap with Tesla's valuation, if they sold their company at their shock price right now, they could buy Porsche five times. <laughs> five times. It's not worth that much money. I No, I don't think it is. I, I don't know. This is a weird one. This is a really weird one. I They're so that. far ahead of everybody else, it's kind of ridiculous. It's, it's, is it too inflated? I think it's way too inflated. Unless they pull off the full self-driving car fleet and, like, buy uber and uber eats and all those if they become the shuttling service with their full self-driving and ai maybe it's worth that much but if they don't do that what what how do they get to that they're working on it but no but how do they get to this market like it just i i think it's the elon effect (laughs) i really do wherever elon goes the world follows i mean they're not bad cars they're just not but they're not half a trillion dollar <laughs> cars. No, they're not five times Porsche. <laughs> Other notables, BYD is number four on the list here. So they over Volkswagen. I don't understand. I don't. Which is I, I am Chinese so goddamn car. confused about that. Yeah, market cap and market valuations based on the stock market are really weird, dude. Yeah, Ford just barely in the top ten. How is that possible? I don't get it. So. By top 10 in market cap, Tesla, Toyota, Porsche, BYD, a Chinese car brand, Volkswagen, Mercedes, BMW, GM, Ford, Stellantis. Poor. Weird. God. Great Wall Motors is in there. Rivian, all the way up in 16th at $25 billion. But they did, what? <laughs> what? They haven't made more than like. 12,000, they've made like 13 or 15,000 cars. Yeah. And they have. They're supposed to be worth $25 billion? They have a market cap over Kia. Kia! Right. I don't understand that. That Over Volvo. Lucid. Nissan. Lucid is up there. Oh, Subaru. Rip. 
<laughs> Subaru's dead. <laughs> Goodbye. Subaru's the yeah. bottom of the list. Lucid Motors, which I've seen, what, one of those around? I saw time? one today. Yeah, uh, there's two around here. Now there's like five. Okay. But Still. yeah, no, I get, I get it. I get it. But there are a lot more Indian Chinese brands that I've never heard of up here. I don't understand here. how they get there. I'm not sure either. Tata Motors I've heard of. Yeah. Uh, SAIC we've talked about. I've never heard of them. Mahindra's up here. In Tractors. Right. Neo, I've heard of that From brand. the Grand Tour. That yeah. was the electric supercar. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that brand. Not Rimac, but the other one. Uh, Lee Auto, never heard of them. No clue. Uh, Chongqing. Yeah. Chang'an, uh, not a clue. GAC, another Chinese brand. Well, I want to try to say that. Guangzhou. <laughs> Automobile group. Geely? I've heard of Geely. Yeah, I've heard of Geely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, huh. The whole financial world behind the auto industry is like fascinating and weird. Really weird. Yeah, it's just odd. I don't get it. Yeah. This I really whole don't understand. Market cap is just, I guess, just the Elon effect. I'm just glad I'm not in banking anymore. I don't blame you. But Tesla's on top of market cap in earnings. Toyota actually brings home the most money and in revenue volkswagen shows the best on the books yeah sells the most amount of things right 280 billion dollars pretty wild oh yeah that's a lot of money that's a lot of money that is a lot of money yep total market cap across all the car dealers or car manufacturers 1.858 trillion dollars trillions with a t with 58 companies involved a lot of money. Yeesh. Huge amount of money. That's yeah. that's such an, a fun and interesting thing to go down the rabbit hole of. It really is. Yeah. It just, if you like numbers, it's, it's just interesting to look at this and then fathom that amount of money. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of money. Yep. Like a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah. And uh, we'll put this uh, in the description if you want to go look at like operating margin. They have employees, dividend percentages, P and E ratios, mm-hmm. so you can go nerd out if you totally want. But yeah, if you want to really go nerd out, feel free. Yes, cool stuff. <laughs> Definitely, I would say that is some pretty cool stuff there for sure. Uh, shall we move on though? Sure. Okay. So I've been out and about, and I've seen some things. Have you happened to see anything? Uh, I have. Uh, I saw. I didn't see too many particularly interesting things. Mm-hmm. Um, but going past me the other way. Uh, was a Mercedes that I've seen around town before, and it was Mercedes-Benz AMG GT. It looked like one of the newest ones, and I think it was in either a black or a dark blue, Mm. but I have a picture of a nice yellow one here. Got it. Very clean, but would you drive one? I would rent one on Turo. Yeah? Wouldn't own one. I'd rent one because I'm on a vacation somewhere and I want something interesting to drive. So why would you not want to own one? It's just not exciting enough for me. No? It doesn't. 515 horsepower at 6,000 and change RPM. 500 pound feet of torque. uh, I mean, it's it's fine. It's going to be a quick car. It's got a V8. I mean. No, for sure. Around 200, 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Like. It's not a bad car. No, it's it. It to me, it has the R eight effect. Mmm. It's good. Just good. It's good. Not great. It it's doesn't. Just good. Get you, it's just good. It doesn't give me warm, fuzzy tinglys and the fizz. It's just good. You know, I completely agree. It's the <laughs> R eight effect of sports cars. It's not the dentist's car, I don't think, but it's not far off. It's good. I think it's um, a coach's car, like a hockey coach or a soccer coach, but like way high up <laughs> in the coach. Oh, so that's my. That's a hot take. Yeah, yeah. That's a hot. Or take. the banker kind of car. Okay, mm, I could see that. You have to have the Mercedes badge if you're in that industry, right? Yes. Normally, you'd have an S class, but. Mm-hmm. This is the sports car version of that. It's for the younger banker. Yes. That is mortgaging their house for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see your point. Yes. So, Eesh. did you see anything while you were out and about? 
I saw a couple things. Uh, one thing that tugged at my heartstrings a bit was a Volkswagen. Oh, it was a special Volkswagen. It was a Volkswagen. It was a Mark IV Golf R32. It mm. was the Wookiee. Mm. I love this car so freaking much. Has that 3.2 liter uh, NA naturally aspirated V6, the VR6. It makes that lovely Wookie noise. It makes 240 horsepower, which for a small car is fine. It's 200 and almost 40 torques, pound feet of torque. Uh, it is all wheel drive, which most that for the time was kind of revolutionary. Right. right. Uh, and I just love it. A couple shows ago, I saw an NSX, and you said that that was my my car that I should get that was very fitting for me. Is this oh. the car for you? It's not a 911. No, but let's forget about that for now. It's a Volkswagen. It has the same characteristics that kind of the NSX used to have, right? It's along those lines. I would buy this car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would buy this car. Porsche burned up and they no longer make any cars and you can't buy any cars is this your car i, I would buy this car i think you would <sighs> i think this is the most up your alley car Dude, that's this, not a 911 that an I m3 of. or an rs4 you're not a bmw guy i like an you're m3 not, yeah, audi maybe you're not a bmw guy i could be you're not an aggressive enough driver I you're could. not I use my turn signal too much for them, right? Yes. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a BMW guy. You're an R32 guy. Oh, I really like it. Yes. I just really, really like a Mark IV or <laughs> God, I really do. They were limited, too. Less than 5,000 of them. God. You need that in the middle of, I don't know, some western state somewhere. Not Montana, because this really wouldn't work out there. Why? It's It's so perfect for Montana. No. It's all-wheel drive. It's a hatchback. I can fit skis in the back of it. Can you really? Yes. The hockey sticks would fit? Yes. Man. Everything. It Man. is the it is the one size fits all. Do all the things. Make the good noises. I think that's your lie. version of my NSX. I think it is. Mm. Now, what's faster? The NSX. You think so? Yeah. Okay. This wasn't super fast. It was just great. Okay. It was just fun. Hmm. Hmm. I, I think that's it. your version. But I did see one. <laughs> and every time, I don't see them often because they're pretty rare nowadays. They are. They're older, right? But every time I see them, I'm like, oh, I just want that so bad. God damn. Yeah. It also makes me feel good because I learned how to drive manual on a Mark IV GTI. Same body style. So it just makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. It just makes me happy to see. The fizz, the fuzz. It, it does. The, it does. It does. I love it so much. But that is not my spot of the week. Okay. My spot of the week is something that is odd, and I've always hated them so much. Oh, boy. It is a Plymouth Prowler. Yes. Yes. When's the last time you saw a Plymouth Prowler? You know, I think it was about a month ago. Really? Yeah. I saw one, and it was next to, what is that Chevy? Maybe it was a... Uh, the SSR. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was next to that. That would and be I was a great like, pair to drive. Me and the wife were out on a date, and I asked her, what do you hate more? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question for a great pairing of cars there. God. Lee. Yeah. The Prowler, what were they doing? God, it's so bad. What were they thinking? And you would think with the the looks that they would put a V8 in it, right? What did it have? It had a 3.5 liter V6, which in my opinion was probably pretty damn gutless. Yeah. It had a whopping four-speed automatic with overdrive. Four-speed. Four-speed auto. With over... So Kind of five. Four and a half speed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, it made the same amount of horsepower and torques. Well, just about 255 torque and 253 horsepower. So 255, call it, there it is, 
But nowadays, after it's uh, been around for the last 20 years, I wonder how many of those horses have left the stable. A lot. A whole lot. It's a G. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty awful car. Half, half the horses have left it's, the stable. Was it 110 horsepower now? Maybe? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was rear-wheel drive. It was supposed to be just less than 3,000 pounds. And now I do have to just quickly do a Google here. Because I'm curious how fast it got zero to 60. Yeah. Because I'm just curious. That was my next question. I just, Uh, I have to figure out how quickly. The only person that I ever really saw that had one of these was the, I can't remember his name, the son on the American Chopper show. Mm -hmm. You always saw him advertised with Mm -hmm. these. And I was like, what is their marketing team doing? Are they trying to sell this to motorcycle enthusiasts? Is that the market for this car? <laughs> so, in the more updated ones, you were close to a 6 second 0 to 60. Hmm. In the older ones, you were a 7.1 second 0 to 60. They're not fast. I would say not. What? Why do you buy this car? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Is this a cruise around town? It's a convertible. It's a soft top. I I think all of them are soft tops, right? They didn't make a hard top. But you know what they did make? And now I have to find a picture of this. I have to find a picture of this. They made a Plymouth Prowler uh, trailer. Oh, did they really? A matching trailer. Let me quickly send you a picture of this because it is obscene. It is absolutely obnoxious. All right. It's the biggest piece of garbage thing you've ever seen. Oh, no, that's just awful. Let's see. How about this one? Is that a big enough picture? Are yeah, you a big it doesn't picture? matter. That is a big enough picture. Let's look at this. I'm going to quickly send this over All to right. you here, Derek, so you can take a look at what is even worse than the regular Prowler. It's the regular Prowler with a trailer. Prowler trailer. Yes. Goodness gracious. An actual Prowler trailer. Oh, uh, baby. And it has the, the wheel arches and the mm-hmm. body paint mm-hmm. and the the fog lights mm-hmm. and the running up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, what? I still don't understand. What? Who was this car for? What was this car? I don't know. I I don't know. I I. You had to get the trailer because where do you put anything? There's no room at all anywhere for you. Anything. Take it for an hour long drive and you don't have a place to put your wife. No, I'm sure that the boot. The trunk was full of the tarp that was over the top of your head. Of course. You were getting rained on. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know who buys this car. Motorcycle enthusiasts? Or where else you going with that? I don't know. I can't. I don't know. Corvette people? Is it someone who own a McDonald's? (laughs) 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 You're picturing the person. Yes, I'm picturing the person. Maybe. Is it someone who owns a chain of McDonald's? Yeah, I think so. You own, maybe not a McDonald's, but a a burger joint. I think that they're a hardcore sports car enthusiast. Oh, I'm sure they are. <laughs> Would a Corvette owner have bought one? No. Never. No. Never. I don't know. I don't know who buys the Prowler. I, I don't have an answer. You ha- so you're in the middle of your midlife crisis and you can't buy a motorcycle. That's the person who buys, who buys the Prowler. I think you're right. That's the market. I think you're right. I think you are you're, you're 48 years old. Because you got to have enough money to be able to buy it. Because I don't think that they were super cheap. No. 30s, 40s, something like that. Okay. Right. So maybe 20s, high 20s. But you're 48 years old. Right. You say, honey, I need something exciting in my life. And you say, darling, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy a Harley. And she says, if you buy a Harley, I'm divorcing you. And you go, god damn it. What am I supposed to do now? And then you saunter on into the Plymouth dealer. No, no, no. You saunter the TV you watch American Chopper, five episodes. <laughs> you see the son driving that, and you go, I know what to do. Brother. Does I... the owner of this car have a handlebar mustache? Certainly. Oh, yes. Certainly. Yeah. Oh, Some yes. sort of facial hair. No one. No, no doubt. Mm. 
What a weird car. That's awful. You know, I kind of want to drive one. Because I'm sure they're really bad, <laughs> but I want to know how really bad they are. <laughs> I must find out how bad is really bad. Yeah. Oh, Is it as bad as I think? Because it doesn't look like it would handle well. It doesn't look like it would accelerate. It looks like bad. Just, just bad. I'd love to try to handle this thing with aggression. I think it would kill you. I think it would wrap you around a tree real quick. <laughs> yeah. You might be right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my spot of the week, a Plymouth Prowler. That's a great one. It's so bad, but yeah. so good. So, shall we move on to the I wish they would have? Sure. What do you wish they would have? All right. So, mine is not so much about car manufacturers, but that's I wish that uh, in the U.S. that we would race during more rain and lightning storms. So, a little bit of a little bit of background here. I like that. In other countries, not so much the U.S., it's more of an NA thing that you don't do this, but in Europe, over in, I think even in like South America, because I saw this happen down south in South America one time, you will race in hail, in lightning, in rain, in practically snow, if they can even get the cars on the track at that point. But here in the U.S., if there's a puddle on the track, everything is stopped. If Pretty there's well. a lightning bolt within 10 miles of the track, everything is stopped. Pretty well. And it's for safety purposes. And I understand that. Maybe lightning hits differently here. And we're in Florida. So it does. Let's be real. Could be, yeah. There was a person that was doing roofing not very many houses away that recently died doing roofing here from lightning. Mm-hmm. Lightning is very frequent here. But I do wish that they would race more in the inclement weather than they do here in North America. Yeah, I wish they would just... How about this? I wish that they would still race until the lightning's five miles away. Yes. Bring it closer. Right. Because it does... You can get rain and you want to see the track conditions change and you want to see the chaos evolve on track. That's the entertaining part. Mm -hmm. But you also don't want to see people get struck by lightning at the racetrack. Well, correct. Nobody wants to see that. No. The corner workers are unsafe. It's... I get why they stop it. Mm -hmm. But also, I've seen races in the UK... Where there are lightning bolts smashing down everywhere at the racetrack, and they're just going. Yeah. No problem. Ain't care. I don't know. Why, why is it so different? Maybe it's just America, baby. America's safer? I can't believe we just said that. Yeah. What's <laughs> <This> happened? <laughs> I don't know. That's because we can shoot the lightning away. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I saw a race down in South America. I was talking about this last episode where it was hailing at night and lightning and they were still racing. And I was like, that would never happen in a million years in North America. <laughs> Not never. There's no ever. way. True. I don't know. I wish True. they would. I agree. So what do you got? Uh, I wish that Motul and Liquid Molly products were available on shelves more frequently here in the U.S. Oh, why like, do you bring that Not up? just oil, but brake fluid and all their other products you could buy. Okay. Because it's the pretty much the best you can give your European car. True. It's That is the top shelf champagne of oil and additives for a European car. But we're in America. We are. Mm-hmm. But in America, Volkswagen takes a lot of market cap. <laughs> we, do. we did look at that. They do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I highly doubt that you're going to see that at like. Well, are they around at like the auto zones and the the local you places? You can get. Yeah. So here's the hard thing: you can get the big five liter jug of Liquamali oil, but it's hard to find the one liter individuals. So if you're doing your oil change, you're not usually using ten liters of oil, right? No. Um, and then you really can't find any other liquid Molly product other than their standard oil, unless you order it online. Hmm. And I'm assuming that that's what you want to do. do it, yes. I want to just waltz down to my nearest auto parts, whether it's Napa, O'Reilly's, Advance, Autos, whatever. Right. I want to just say, can I have some Motul RBF 600 brake fluid, please? Can I have some... Liquid Molly, Molly Gen Oil, please. And hmm. instead they say, sure, that'll be here in a week and a half. Right. And they say, you can look over there for all those other brands if yes. you would like. Would you like our 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 off-brand of things? And 
See, that's why you just need an American-made Mustang. You know? No <laughs> problem. You'll also die from that stuff anyway, too. <laughs> no problem. Right. Yeah, There's so no problem here. Let's develop gunk and sludge. Yes, please. <laughs> but yeah, I just wish it was more readily available. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It, your car would probably benefit from it, being a boxer. It probably would. Yeah. Yeah. What oil do you put in your car? I don't remember. It's downstairs. <laughs> Fair. We'll take a look when we're done. Fair enough. All right. Well, yeah, that's all I got. You got anything else? I do not. All right, that's going to wrap us up for episode 145. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please leave us a thumbs up and drop a comment on the video. What do you wish they would have? And if you're listening audio, send that I wish they would have to us via social. Facebook is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. YouTube is We Are Auto. And our website is We Are Auto dot IO, where you can go to catch some of your favorite past races. So thanks again. Catch you guys the next one. Peace.